Hi everyone. Um, recently I made a video on making this one. Um, I put it in a time lapse and it's just way too fast and I thought I could get away with it, but I can't. So a lot of people have been asking me how you make those bubbles. It looks so real. Well, I'm going to show you. Um, these bubbles are actually very simple and it's the same way I make teardrops or water droplets like that. See? It's actually very easy. First I'm going to show you on a piece of paper and let's see. I'm going to take a pencil and just kind of um, give you a little bit of a shaded background here. All right. So a teardrop shape is all like this. Or it could be, you know, kind of like that, like flowing from the top. Or it could be a little blob of water. Or it could be a perfect circle, like a bubble from soap, like a soap bubble. Okay. So whatever your background is it really it doesn't matter much these are really easy to do um, especially on top of a busy background and all you have to do is shade and that's it you draw your shape you shade the top the inside of the top has to be shaded like that and you smooth it out And then you shade the bottom of the drop, which is on the outside, on the bottom, right here. Like that. And you blend it out. Because this is the only way I make them and it works for me and it's the simplest way. Um, a drop, a bubble, it, they're not flat, they're domed. The light, I'm using my light source as the top. So the top, the light's coming from the top and it's hitting the top of the bubble. Therefore causing a, a shade at this part. And then another shade on this side of the bubble. Here we go again. I'm going to shade the top right here and shade underneath. Now these these long droplets are a little bit harder to do. I prefer the rounds and the tear shaped ones. But with practice you, you get a lot better. So this is my shadows on the top, and then the shadows on the underneath the drop. Shadow is on the inside, on the top. And underneath the drop. Shadow is on the top 
on the inside of the drop and underneath on the outside of the drop. And here I like to outline them. I'm going to outline these with, with uh, black ink. And this has all to do really with the colors that you have in your painting. Um, you pick up on those colors. You pick up the darkest colors that you have. And you use those for outlining. Just remember your shade on the inside on the top and on the outside on the bottom and then the last thing you do is a highlight and this is the black pen and you highlight you're gonna have a little little bit of highlight on the top and some on the bottom and I like to put some dots too these don't show up too much because of the colors. But put some shading there and you put your your highlights in a curved direction. And there are the drops easy peasy you can see that well okay now on a painting like this one these colors are really dark so I went with the black outline um, the dark this one was really dark and this one was really dark so to lighten it up a little bit I just kind of rub some white paint on the inside and just smudge it just to lighten up the inside because your, your drop you want your drop to actually be a little bit lighter on the inside than it is around and and then I, I, I shaded it with uh, burnt umber on the inside on the top here and underneath and shaded that and then went over it with with black and then on this one, my primary color here was blue. So I went with a dark straight blue here on the top and underneath for shading. And I went ahead and just and, and just uh, trimmed them all in black anyway because this whole picture is kind of cartoony. Um, you could also outline the, the highlights too. That could be cute. So I, I was playing around today with uh, making a background with and I made this thing and it's kind of a crazy wild mess and uh, I figured well I need to stop making this background and do something constructive with it so I'm going to do the bubbles on here and show you how to do the bubbles. So I have some lids here this is a, a this is a pretty big lid for oatmeal box then I have a, a little cup and a bigger cup and I got three sizes here that's that's good enough three sizes um, I might want to use a little bitty size which I might do my my glue stick okay so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna find the most interesting parts of this painting uh, that I want to keep and like I like what this is going on here so I'm going to put it over that and I'm going to go ahead and trace this with my black paint marker just so you guys can see it really well and here we go here's my first circle
and I'm going to make maybe three big ones like this. Um, I kind of like what's going on here. So I'm going to overlap this one. Now I want, since I already drew this one, I want this one to be behind it. So I'm going to trace it only right up to there where the line starts on the other one. There. And then, let's see. I like this area right here. It's really pretty, but it doesn't balance out. Oh, why not? We're going to, or maybe down here. This is probably the hardest part of this whole thing, is, is trying to figure out where you want your bubbles. Hmm. I think I'm going to do that because, yeah, I'll put it right here. Okay, just go for it. Here's another one. Now I'm going to go with the next size, this size. Now I really like this flower here. So I'm going to make a bubble right here, but I don't want to put it like slap in the middle right there. It needs to needs to be a little bit touching the other one so I'm going to go ahead and do this and it's going to go behind that big bubble there we go and I need another one oh here I like these colors Here, this one's going to go off. Now, by picking the parts that you want to keep, I don't mean you're going to get rid of everything else. You're not exactly. You're going to um, just kind of put a wash over the background. Let's see, where could I put? I really, I like this flower here. The right there. one more big one here but this is only going to show partially because it's going to be behind these two big ones yeah now I'm gonna get my little cup and do some here and there now this this area right here it's got some cute colors going on this area here uh, like this area here now you could do this with um, like an abstract uh, background this is really a background if you're into jelly prints. Um, those probably get really cute. Should I do one more? Yeah, right here. And here's another one. Now this video is going to take a while. I hope it doesn't go out on me. Now, for this one, um, I want to do some like little bubble stuck but this is too hard to trace so I'm just gonna freehand them and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make some bubbles stuck to the inside here Now you don't have to do this, but since this whole painting is only going to be bubbles, I was thinking to make the bubbles a little more interesting.
And I learned how to do this watching other people's YouTube videos. Some just were kind of difficult looking and just very elaborate. And uh, I finally just work it worked it down to a to a system that was easy for me. And now I'm doing bubbles like crazy. And everybody's like, how did you do that? It looks a lot harder than what it is. Okay, I think I've got enough bubbles for right now. So to isolate these bubbles, make them pop out, we're gonna paint the background. And what I'm gonna do with the background, I like to keep the colors that I'm using. Um, I like this purple that I have. And it's stuck. This is dioxide purple. It's a it's a very dark color. So I don't want to cover my background design. I just want to do like a wash over it. So I'm going to let's see, I'm gonna use a brush. Kind of a no not this one. A little bit not too stiff like this. And I'm, I'm going to use, uh, put some water in here and make like a wash. Okay. And just kind of clean off my brush a little bit. And let's see. With this one, I'm going to start here on this end. And I'm going to just rub it to the background. that and I find it's a little bit too dark although it's on the outside edge so it's not a big deal let's rub some of that off so you can see still see the print behind it but it's it's getting a little darker okay let's see I had a hmm I don't know what happened to my wipe keep a wet wipe with me Now these colors, I don't want to completely cover that up because I think it's pretty. So what I'm going to do is, even with my own finger, wet my finger and rub, rub it on there. And what you're really doing, this is a glaze. You do a glaze. of a, a glaze or a dry brush effect and I'm gonna put some right here and here's my white This purple oxide is a really pretty color, but I have a lot of green in the background. So purple and green tends, tends to make brown. So I'm getting a lot of brown with this. So I don't think I'm gonna use too much of it.
See, I'm not really covering up the painting underneath. I'm just giving it a shadow so it's receding in the background and letting the bubbles pop. Of course, you don't want to pop your bubbles. I want them nice and perky and full and shiny, shiny bubbles. See, I'm gonna try some blue. This is uh, cobalt blue from Quopart. I'm not gonna clean my brush. Oops, technical difficulties again. I'm gonna make sure this is taping correctly. Yeah. All right, guys. Sorry about that. <coughs> this is a cobalt blue. A light wash with it and start rubbing. See, this is kind of a boring area. There's a lot of white here. I'm going to cover that up. And that blue is looking pretty right there. I'm going to follow it with this over here. I'm trying not to make long videos, but unfortunately I don't know how to edit. And really no interest in learning. Not a tech technical person. I'm hoping some miraculous thing will happen and someone would come down and do it for me. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think that's going to happen, so I'm going to have to learn sooner or later. Okay, this paint's getting a little dry, so I'm just going to mist it just a little bit with some water. And there we go. Bit. Oh, almost took it all off. Okay, I'm getting around this area and it is looking a little more purpley over here. So I'm going to go pick up some more of this purple and see what happens. Too watery. Now you don't want to go too too dark with the background because you're going to need that there's shadow underneath your bubbles. 
and I'm not sure yet what color I'm going to go with. I might go with um, turquoise, which I have a really pretty color that I'm starting to run out of. Now, if you were doing like teardrops on a person's face or something, you don't you don't do this to the background. This is just so because this is only a bubble painting and it doesn't have any other subjects in it. I want the background to just fade away in in a little bit and show the bubbles. back to blue over here because it's a lot of yellow and purple and yellow makes brown we don't want that I'm gonna do some blue and a little mist of water Now another little another thing I like to do with a bubble painting when it's just bubbles is go inside the bubbles and do some mark making to accent all the little designs. So I might do that. You would do that first before shading and highlighting the bubbles. And I'm almost done with this. Now the background took me a while to do because I had something else completely different in mind. And like usual, it never turns out the way that I want. About 90% of my paintings are happy accidents. I always just used to paint realistic until I found abstract and mixed media and I was like oh I don't have to paint realistic anymore <laughs> so happy accidents are a good thing and realism is not no you don't know you don't you have accidents you got poo but with abstracts you can work on whatever you make make it work Okay, I'm going to do some little bit of design real quick. Let's see. Normally I would do this with a um with black paint and a fine tip brush. I really don't have time, so I'm just going to doodle a little bit. And here we have flower. So I'm going to accent these little flowers. circle here so it doesn't look like a bubble I'm just going to do a, a little twirl on it and here we have some lines and I'm just going to trace them a little bit and 
and all I'm doing is just tracing the edges of the paint. And it's giving me a little design, makes it more interesting. Like this one is, is kind of boring looking. <clears throat> so I'm going to go over some of these lines that are on here. I hope this pen doesn't give out on me. This paint is very dry. I did this a lot earlier today. And I've been wanting to do a video on bubble making bubble making to show you guys so it's very well dry the pins work pretty good as long as the paint is dry and I do have a lot of circles here so I'm going to make some more twirls and I got a lump there I don't know why I have a lump there but it's just due And I have some little patterns here from handmade stamps and stencils that I did and just nothing in particular. Just little random designs to give my backgrounds dimension. interesting right here here we have some leaves and then I have this one here it's got a lot of white in it so doing a few little black lines it's going to make it more interesting. I'm doing this very quickly. This one's pretty. Now this one's got some cool designs to trace. I'm just going with the flow of the paint, literally. Some of this paint I just kind of let it flow on its own and and then some of it I paint designs on it and some of it I stamped on there and just maybe I'll do a video about that but I haven't really gotten good at it yet so <laughs> I don't always come out with a really cool background now this one's got a spot here some interesting designs on that one. Oh, this one's got a lot of circles. And it's got a line going through here. And I'm really, I'm not making any designs at all now. If you know how to do Zentangles and other little doodles, you can take your time and sit here and do some, some cute doodles on this. I think that would be good. But that would take a long time. So I'm just going to do a quickie. I did have one stencil 
on here that is uh, flowers with stems and those are the ones the the flowers and and the leaves that I've been tracing over like this one right here now see this one it's so much bigger I'm gonna try the, the plant the black paint marker let's see of this on here. Maybe on this one too since it's the big one these three big ones I'm gonna make some bolder designs with the black pen so I could go for days doing this I'm just making designs after designs my pen's drying up sloppy outline here and here and this one too so it all looks cohesive oh and I got this little one left over here but I'm going to do it with the thin lines and then I'll put some thin lines here too mm. Yeah, this, this has got to dry well, too, before I start anything else. All right. I'm going to dry this a little bit with a hair dryer because that uh, ink see yeah I can't paint over it This is um, painter's pen from Walmart, and it's oil-based, so it's going to write over anything. Clean my paint off of here. These are, uh, <laughs> these wipes, I like to keep them and collect them, let them dry, and this has still got a lot of ways to go. And they make really cute additions to collaging. This is looking cute already, the way it is. I'm 
going to get some more wipes. And these wipes are drying up because I never closed the lid. All right. Now, to do my shadows, I'm going to use this turquoise um, from Golden. It's just turquoise, phthalo, phthalo, phthalo. I, don't, I can never, I, I can't, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. Been painting all my life. Been saying phthalo. It's probably not phthalo, huh? Phthalo? Phthalo. It's not going to be phthalo. No. Phthalo. Okay. Uh, here we go. Here we go. It's a very dark turquoise. Very pretty. And what I'm going to do here is I want a thin a thin mix just like we did the background and we're going to do half like this is half right here on the inside remember I said on the inside we're going to shade shade the inside of the bubble Goody, goody, goody. Looks like the ink dried well. I'm going to show you the inside of the bubble. Now the color that you pick to shade with, since this is very colorful, I, I picked it because it's not a color that's in the background, but it goes well with all of these. I'm just going to spray some water on here so I can smear it better. Remember you just want a glaze. Now you can use glazed medium to do this. It's probably easier. Mine is kind of lumpy. I've been having it for too long so I'm not using it. <laughs> okay that would be the top the top um, shadow for this one. Now, because I have a bubble behind this one, we're going to have to um, make shadows thin, thin shadow on the sides. Just to show that we have, we're on top of that bubble there and on both sides here. Now, if you don't have this particular turquoise, any dark blue would be beautiful. Dark blue, greenish blue. You could always um okay, and this one's behind I might as well put the, the shadow on the top of the bubble that's behind here. And that's gonna blend in right there. Alright. water. Now I'm going to put a shadow on underneath this one. Now I have these little bubbles on the side. I don't want to cover those up because they're they're like sticking to the big bubbles, the little baby bubbles. And they're going to have shadows of their own. Maybe just a little line mostly like that now I'm just blending with my finger into the back I uh, also came across these these are in the makeup section in uh, Walmart or you know any pharmacy place a place to have makeup and um, these are perfect for blending because they have like a palette <laughs> like a paddle shape on one end and a pointy shape on the other and if you just moisten them with some water and they're good little blenders but I don't need a blender here but a lot of times I do need a blender when I'm doing these okay now I'm going to 
do the top of this one. See how this turquoise, it mixes with, with purples and pinks so well. Put this one on the bottom too. But just remember your shadow goes on underneath, on the outside of the bubble, and on the inside on the top. This is not the only way to do it because you have the light source in different areas. This is the only way I do it because it's easy to remember. And when you can't have a hard time remembering things, if you do just the same thing all the time, you won't mess it up. <laughs> I just learned how to do bubbles a few months ago myself. And now I want to do everything bubbles. Everything bubblicious. Now for the little bitty tiny ones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Q-tip and just, um, just rub a little bit on the top of each one. I'm not going to worry about the bottom shadow because it's, it, they're already in a thick black line. If I was doing it with a thin marker, I would have worried more about the bottom of shadow but I just want to give them a little bit of a shadow on the top Okay, these bubbles, shadow goes on the inside of the top of the bubble, halfway up around the side. And then if the bubble's on top of another one, I'm going to give it a little shadow there. Blend with your finger, with a brush, with a Q-tip, whatever you have. And then the shadow goes underneath. I'm just going to put shadows all underneath this cluster of bubbles there. And find this a little bit too dark. Just kind of dry brush it a little bit right there. I'm going to check this video, see if it's still going. Yes, it is. It's still going. I made a video last week and it stopped halfway. 
That was disappointing. And I'm just going to scrap that one. Okay, shadow goes inside the top of the bubble. Outside the bottom of the bubble. Now, I'm not going to put a shadow right here. Why? Because the light is coming from here. So you're not going to see a shadow on top of that. The shadow goes on top of here. Just like I'm not going to do a shadow on here. Okay, let me see. I'm going to show you. This bowl is going to have a shadow on the top. Not right here. Maybe right here. Because it's slightly on the bottom but that's it no more than that I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow under these maybe right here and then a little bit on the top and this one's gonna be right here Now, this one, I'm going to do a little bit of shadow on the side. And then here on the top. And one more, right here. This one's on the edge.
All right, it's all shaded. And the last thing to do is put your highlights. And I'm gonna do a blob of white right here. And the same brush. And these are shader brushes. Get something with a sharp edge right there. This is um, angle brush. Love angle brushes. Okay. Take a good bit of white. And start over here. And you're just going to make some lines in an arch way. Following the contours of your bubble. Around the edge. The bigger the bubble, the more highlights you want to put. I also like to do a dot with the tip of my brush. Dot there. Put three dots in the big ones. It's three on the top. Three on the bottom. little one I'm going to put some two dots here I think this is the most colorful one I've done so far. Now what I don't get, <laughs> everybody loves these. I get hundreds of likes and I've only sold one. Hmm. Might have to give these away for Christmas. Actually, no. I sold four last week, but they're not really just bubbles. It was more abstracty. See, the actual bubbles are not as hard as they look. Some people thought I glued some crystals on top or something that made them shine like that. It's like, nope. Although that's an idea. But I don't have crystals and really can't afford to go buy any. I'll use what I have. Yeah. One more, and I'm done. Okay, and voila.
there goes my bubbles. What you guys think? Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Please like my videos. Hope to have some more soon.